friends over last night. I baked some cakes and like sweet treats and it kind of turned into having a few drinks as well. So didn't feel super fresh this morning. The weather also has been all over the place this like whole last week. I think it's going to continue to be like this, which is so annoying. Um, but the sun came up briefly and I kind of just felt disgusting, like laying on the sofa all hungover. So I went to the gym and then I just went to Morrison's to get pizza. Because life's all about balance. I was going to film more of me like doing the cakes and stuff, but time just like ran away. So I just completely didn't film any of that. Additionally, I've been having an absolute nightmare with my video footage since having this new camera and I lost about four videos worth of footage um, which is just absolutely horrendous and I was pretty upset about it this sort of week um, but there's nothing I can do and I'm just gonna have to film new videos now. The main thing that I'm quite upset that you now missed is we made a few more changes in the flat kind of to the lead up of having our friends over because it's been ages since we had people over. I think sometimes I need to invite people over to my house for me to get shit done. So I've been like hanging up posters. We finally, can you see that? Hold on, I'll take you around. We finally hang up our knife rack, which I was desperate to do. Um, and like there's a poster there. I found loads of posters when we went to the beach um, like a couple of weeks ago now and there was a shop with like loads of nice posters for quite a good price so I got a few of those. I got these lovely flowers yesterday from our friends but I've run out of vases so just in a pint glass which is so glamorous. I picked up these flowers again from Morrison's and they were reduced to £1.30 and how gorgeous are they? I love how there's so much greenery. And then I also got some more flowers because the deal was so good. I put them on here. Um, I rearranged this. I've been meaning to rearrange the like coffee table because I just end up throwing all my stuff on there and then it doesn't look good. So I put my picture books and stuff um, on there, um, which is nice. The sofa's moved around because it opened up the room a lot more when we had friends in, but I actually much prefer it like this. It's just not very practical for watching telly when there's two of you. But this morning, when I felt like I had to throw my guts up, I was just laying on there watching TV and it was great. Um, but we're probably gonna have to move it back around tomorrow or something. I might insert a little montage um, of like the cakes that I baked. I took some footage on my phone as I was stressing to put on my makeup and welcome people in. So I'll put a little montage in and maybe I'll do a little montage of like the slight home updates um, or the picture frame stuff because I'm quite happy with them and they actually, I mean that's the whole point of having artwork in your house but it actually just makes the whole place look so much more homey. Um, so yeah, let's enter the montage. And I don't know what else I'm going to be doing this week. I guess we'll find out.
welcome to the office. Um, this has changed a lot since I last filmed in here. I feel like I never really showed this caller. Absolutely gutted that I lost all the video footage because I literally shared an entire tidying the office video. Um, which to be honest in hindsight was probably really boring anyway so I guess that's a good thing that the footage is gone. Lots of things have changed in here. I really wanted to just like tidy up, make everything a bit more streamlined and I also had to order a load of storage boxes because we had a kind of like moth infestation once again. I don't know if I shared this in my videos kind of like in November, October time last year but we had a really bad moth infestation then. They were like festering and all of my knitwear, all the things that I made and my yarn. It was highly traumatic and it took like weeks and weeks and weeks to get rid of them and to get them out of my clothes. Anyways, um, that's so boring but they came back and instantly uh, the alarm bells went off and I was like, not again this time. We're not doing this again. So I put everything in boxes. I basically still kept all of my coned yarn out just on the shelf, but I boxed them all up. I had like a few bits of like yarn and open boxes, boxed them all up. And I can actually happily say they've all gone now. Like we basically were just killing them. We got this like moth spray and we put loads of traps out. And fingers crossed, they haven't been back. Every now and again we get one, but like, we just kill it. But anyways, I where was I going with this? Oh yeah, that then forced me to tidy up the office and kind of organize it. So I changed the layout of my desk, which originally was attached to like this Ikea unit. And I really liked it for a time it worked, but when we moved it into this room, it just didn't make sense because I had this chrome shelf and I had the Ikea unit and there was just like, bits stored here and there and really I didn't need two shelves so what I did was I took the IKEA unit off and I attached the like desk surface to my wire shelf instead which works really well I think it looks nice it looks fine and I got a bunch of these storage boxes to like keep all my stuff in because previously the IKEA unit had drawers which obviously I had to get rid of and I got a bunch of these boxes which I love. They are the hay um like plastic boxes which I had been eyeing up and then they were on a sale. I'll put the link down below. I don't know if the sale is still going on um but yeah I got a bunch of them. I got a few for upstairs as well for my boyfriend to store his stuff in there but they're just so cute and they add like a bit of colour. I don't know do you want to have a closer look at my organisation? Why not? I'm gonna show you anyways. So starting at the top, we have my magazines and my like um, stitch books, which I got in a charity shop. I don't love how the top is displayed. I feel like it looks really full on and messy, but I've tried a few other ways and it just doesn't work because the magazines and the books are so heavy. Even when I put book weight there, it just like things fall off. And sometimes this also is quite shaky. Um, when I work on my knitting machine, so I don't want to risk like things breaking. So that's how it's looking at the moment. And then I have all my like computer, tech, hard drives, charging cables in there, just random bits in there, um, notebooks and my knitting kit. These notebooks is where I keep my knitting machine patterns mainly. And then down here we have my sewing machine, which I've actually put the cover on for once. I haven't had the cover on before. I feel like it actually keeps it quite nice and clean and not so dusty. Then we have all my little sewing supplies. So like threads, random bits of elastic, um, measuring tapes, these little darning needles. Um, yeah, just like a load of random stuff. And underneath I have my packaging kit, my um, stickers and labels and just like boring stuff like that. Then this is more of just a random box. I find there's a lot of things that I need quick access to. So for example, like measuring tape, I like to just quickly get it out and then I can drop it back in. Um, this measuring tape as well, like the amount of times I just grab it to quickly measure something and I just drop it back in. I didn't want to keep these things in a closed up box because it would just mean I would throw the stuff on top of the box and that is not very tidy. Um, and yeah, just pens and needles, I don't know. Then below here in this box, we have all my knitting machine supplies, like the oil to keep it all nice and greased up. 
I guess. Um, yeah, all the little supplies that the machine came with and some other home items, like when I wanna put up picture frames, that's all in there. And then this is like the quick access box that I just throw little random bits in. So I have my camera um, and just like, I don't know, random letters that I need to file and stuff like that. So that's quite good to have because I can just quickly access it. And then also down below here, we have my label printer, my Alexa. They're just nicely tucked away. Okay, then we get to the closed up boxes. As you can see on there, I don't know if you can read it, but that's all my little random scraps. These I use for my granny squares quite a lot. Then this is a box full of manuals and patterns. And then these boxes down here, they're just like art supplies. So I have like paints um, and random, I don't know, like little ties and things that you randomly might need. I also have this box full of cotton yarn down here. It did originally live on the big shelf, but I've been using it recently. So this is just where it lives at the moment. And then I'll show you behind here. This has changed slightly as well. So up at the top is what I mentioned about having all my cone yarn boxed up. So no moss can live in there. That's still the same. I now have a box for my full yarn skeins, which I never had before because I always buy everything secondhand. So I never had like four skeins, but they live in there. Then I have a whole box for all of my brushed acrylic because that is actually one of my favorite types of yarn to work with. So they have a dedicated box. A box just for the flashy colours yarn, which I use a lot for my knitting machine. Then here's a lot of my fabric. So I have clothes that I want to alter, loads of fabric scraps, and then a big box of complete fabric. And I tagged them as well. So it's a bit more organised. So I have my floral, my planes, and any patterns like gingham and plaid there and there. And then down below is just like our towels and bed sheets and random stuff that we need to keep. I hope that's kind of interesting. I feel like I always like looking into other people's homes, so I thought I would share. Um, I also, actually, let me show you. I added a nice little photo there. I've been trying to add my frames and posters and stuff more in like awkward or like unconventional places. So I have some nice little um, photo booth pictures there. And I did also add this poster, which we got um, in a cute little shop when we went to the seaside and yeah I feel like it just adds a bit more color and it kind of matches these boxes there and another thing that I wanted to share with you guys is actually the t-shirt that I'm wearing I might actually take you into the other room so I can share you some of the other designs as well I basically was in this massive like knitting and crocheting rut over the last month I would say and I just simply didn't feel like picking up a pair of needles or a hook but I still wanted to be like creative and stuff so instead I thought about some designs that I want to put on t-shirts because I really like wearing big baggy t-shirts and I have actually recently just been stealing my boyfriend's t-shirts and they just go with everything but my outfit's been kind of getting a bit repetitive so I was thinking I could just like recreate kind of like band tees like graphic tees but make them knitting and crocheting related because I feel like there's a gap in the market I couldn't find any like cool edgy knit crochet related stuff and I was like why not like knitting and crocheting has become so fun and cool and mainstream there needs to be merch there needs to be cool t-shirts for it so I came up with a few designs and had them printed and then I was like why don't I sell them on my shop um so if you didn't know I do have an online shop where I sell a lot of my knitting and crocheting stuff but I'm basically going to launch these t-shirts on there as well there's three designs that I made first of all this one that I'm wearing the knit and bitch one um which I will just insert a video of the back actually before I'm like twisting and turning there is this one which is the granny square designs one so you have a few little granny squares at the front and then the back's kind of the main event. You have all these designs and that's what it says at the top. The little text is just mentioning all the designs in order. This took me so long to illustrate because I literally drew up and traced every single one of these granny squares. It took forever, it was really fun, but it took forever. Um, so this is like definitely one of my favorites. I love the front. The front feels so like vintage vibes. And then the third one, is this one, which is the only one which has the main print on the front. And it's this yarn noodles t-shirt in blue. And it's just like 
a skein of yarn in a bowl with its needles, which also looks like a pot of noodles or ramen. And then the same just little bowl is on the top at the back, which I really love. Like that's one big feature that I wanted for the t-shirts was for them to have like the double layers. So obviously this one has the text and the design at the back. And then this has the little design at the front and the big design at the back. But yeah, these are made with 100% cotton. They're kind of like a heavier cotton, which is really important to me. They have a really relaxed oversized fit. All the sizing is unisex as well. The t-shirts are going to be available on Friday the 9th of June, which I believe when I post this video will be this coming Friday, the Friday this week. So if you want to check them out, maybe get one for yourself. I would love that so much. We could all be matching. That would be very cool. Um, but yeah, definitely check out my website. And if you wanna be like one of the first ones to find out, definitely follow me on Instagram as well. Cause I'll be sharing a lot on my stories and stuff like that. I feel like I'm most um, active or up to date on Instagram. Cause I'll just like post a story or something. Yeah, I'm very excited. I have so many more ideas for designs. These were the only three designs that I had time for before I was like, I need to get back to real life and um, like try earn money in a way, which unfortunately is what I need to do in order for me to do the things that I love. Anyways, loads and loads more ideas. Obviously these two are knitting related, but I'd love to do maybe another crochet one. Obviously this is the only one and I know not everyone likes granny squares, but I obsessed um this is so fun so yeah whether this is the thing that i'll keep working on i don't know um i'll see sort of what the demand is like but yeah very excited and i'm so excited to finally share it with you well i'm sure i'll be wearing these in a lot of my videos not just because i want to promote it because i actually love them they are so much fun to wear what else am i doing today I already went on a big walk this morning. I'm trying to get more steps in because everything I do in my day it includes me sitting at a desk, whether that is working for my job or working for my little side hustle, which is knitting and crocheting where you just sit around or I'm editing a video, which is just sitting around. So yeah, anyways, trying to get more steps in and I was walking past this charity shop and I had a bag in its front window, which I have been looking for on Vinted and couldn't really find it. Basically, Sophie Floyd posted this bag on her story and I screenshotted it because I'm like obsessed with it. I've been looking for a similar one, like basically like a snake skin or animal print slouch bag. Just for the summer, I feel like I need a bigger bag because in the summer you're out for longer and you just need more stuff. I literally was just walking past the street with these charity shops, just like having a little peek in the window and I saw this bag but it was like way too early it was like eight in the morning and they didn't open to half nine so I just came back anyways had a shower and stuff but I think I'm gonna go back I might cycle there um to get it because it's actually perfect I couldn't see the price tag so if it's like 20 quid I don't think I'm gonna get it because I don't need it that bad but if it's like a tenner I'll get it I say that now and I'll probably just get it anyways no matter the price there were like a few other charity shops near it as well. So I might check them out as well.
good morning. I'm wearing my new Levi's jeans that I found in the charity shop the other day. I actually can't believe I found them. They fit so well. Um, when I tried them on, they were really, really baggy, which makes me think that they are gonna really stretch out and get really baggy after like a couple wears, but they've just come straight out of the wash. So they sit so nice and snug. It's been a while since I had a pair of high-waisted jeans as well. I usually go for low waist at the moment, but I was thinking in the summer, like when I'm wearing crop tops, I sometimes don't want to have my entire belly on show. And this means I can wear a bit more of a cropped top, I guess. Um, yeah, super happy with these. I'm running some errands today. I've also got a doctor's appointment, but yeah, I'm running some errands before that. I need to return some parcels and I want to go to the library. I just don't know what to wear. The weather at the moment is so shit. If you live in the UK, you know exactly what I mean. It's just so awful. And I don't know what to wear because I think it's going to be like 20 degrees today, but it's super gray and it might like a fizzle a little bit. So I can't wear like a little top because realistically it's just going to be humid, not actually like sunny hot. So yeah, I'm a bit stumped on that. Maybe I'll just do a white tee. <laughs> That's all I ever wear. I feel like this could be quite cute. This is one of the tops that I can't wear at the moment because it's so short, but with these jeans, I feel like that would be very sweet. I don't know if I want to make that much of an effort today though. Maybe I will, why not? Okay, that's cute. I just need to ah, take this clip out. There we go, that's better. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of a reading update. I haven't really read that much at all over the last month, just because I have also been knitting and crocheting less, and that's usually how I get most of my reading in, is through audiobooks as I'm knitting and crocheting, but because that hasn't been happening, definitely been reading less, and then I really wanted to pick up reading in the evening. My usual bedtime routine is watching TikToks until I fall asleep. That I was just getting bored of. Like, I would lay in bed, and I would open TikTok and it felt like a chore. I was like, God, I just really don't want to be on here right now. Just because I'm like bored of it, basically. So I wanted to read and the only book that I had at home that I hadn't finished yet was Clara and the Sun. I obviously bought this as a paperback and then I also bought it as an audiobook on Audible and listened to it halfway through, sort of around this time last year and never finished it. I think I got really bored of it um, and I didn't really know where the book was going so I just stopped and life happened but because I had it at home I just looked on Audible, saw where I finished off the audiobook and picked it up again in this paperback version and I got so much more into it. I really really enjoyed it. I was like looking forward to reading this in the evenings which is like the nicest feeling obviously. I had to google the plot not the plot but i just had to google like an analysis of this book because as i was reading it i kept thinking the entire time am i misunderstanding other metaphors that i'm not getting because if you didn't know the protagonist of this book is an ai like a, a robot and everything is seen through the eyes of this robot so a lot of the times the descriptions of a situation or the descriptions of a person will be so literal that i couldn't tell if this was really what was happening or if this was just the interpretation of the robot herself when i was reading the analysis i was definitely more on track than i thought when i was reading it and i actually couldn't wait to finish this towards the end and just read the analysis to be like what does this mean so yeah i did actually enjoy this in the end it just took me a while to come around to it and then what i have been doing with like my audiobooks i've been using libby which is obviously free if you have a library card and i came to this crazy realization which was that i can just go to the library and get a book and I don't have to spend money because I'm trying not to spend so much money. I picked up this, the start of something, and this really, really spoke to me because it's like a classic like anthropology book with like no plot. Books without a plot is like so my kind of drift, like very much Sally Rooney vibe. Basically the book is written within 10 chapters and each chapter is a different has a different protagonist but they're all linked somehow so you'll read one chapter of one person and within this chapter this person is going to encounter another person and then the next chapter will go into their lives and it kind of shows how everything is connected i did enjoy that whole concept i'm not like 
amazed by this book like it didn't blow me away big 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 trigger warnings did not expect that um there's like sexual assault happening from the assaulters point of view i don't know if i'm spoiling this maybe i'll take out the section where i just named the chapter so you don't know who it's about but yeah that was intense uh but it was a good like evening read so i'm gonna head back to the library today um before my doctor's appointment and i'm gonna pick up another book hopefully so yeah just a little update on that i do hope that my knitting and crocheting projects are picking up again because then i'll be listening to more books on audiobooks and stuff so i'll get a bit more reading in that way <laughs> <laughs>